All right, so I'm actually at building the suspension is where I am now, and I've done a couple of videos on this. But they make a big mistake here. Big mistake. They claim 12 millimeters, right? There's my 12 mil. This is obviously not perfectly 12 mil. This is bigger than 12 mil. So, the mistake I think that they've made here is if you want full droop, right? Full range of motion in the rear suspension. If you go 12 mil, you'll see if I put this cup, I need to go more than 12 mil to get the full range of motion. Now, why they go 12 mil, that'll obviously not give you the full amount here, which in turn means you didn't have to do the clearance in there. Anyway, so I'm not going to do the 12 mil. I will probably put a longer, longer bore end here so that I can get the full travel in my suspension and if you put a longer one here you don't have to preload your coil as much or even at all to get this the right height that you want anyway yeah that's uh, yeah that's something I'll definitely do different anyway this is how far I've gotten with my chassis in a full day, uh, everything's wired up, ready to rumble. I try to do somewhat of a okay job with the wiring. So that's my servo. And then there's a servo plug here. This bundle of nonsense is obviously from the gyro. Uh, and then that's where my servo plugs in. That's the wiring for that. That little plug over here is the fan, right? And that all plugs into my receiver. So obviously ESC steering fan. And then, yeah, antenna wire loop through there because why not? That's what my other ones, there's my antenna wire for that one. Anyway. So yeah, not bad. I'll sort that out real quick and build the other ones. It takes me five seconds because I don't run oil in them. Yep. I don't run oil in my shocks as all my beautiful, amazing friends in uh, Montreal would know. No oil, don't need it. No oil. No oil. That car over there, no oil. That car in the trailer over there, no oil. Uh, yeah. Anyway, guys. So, okay. I am now on the front. And I still made, from the bottom of the collar, the shock shaft length to the cup. That distance is still 12 mil, like the manual tells you to do right there. But I put longer ones on so that I can have full droop in the front and it'll pop right on. If you don't, then you won't have full droop. Anyway, I thought I'd just put that in there. Well, here we go. So I started at, um, I want to say 8.40 this morning. It's now 7.40, no, 7.14 uh, p.m. And this is what I have created for myself. Obviously, it takes a little longer when you start switching out to different colors and you don't want to make it all the same on both sides. So I try to 
mismatch and that kind of thing. <laughs> I had to throw some gold in certain spots uh, because I started running out of button heads and, 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 and. Anyway, suspension all set up. You can see I have full droop. Uh, yeah, really, really sick. Moves really great. I uh, haven't done any of the toe or anything because I first want to get my ride height to the way I want it to be. And then I will do all of the other nonsense that go with it. Uh, if I look at it like this, it's obviously cambered. When I turn in to about that angle, it's kind of flat. But when I go to full lock, you'll see this is way lower here than here. Sorry for the page. I'll show you guys more in detail when I film that tomorrow. But this is already eh, a little sus. I don't, I don't like that. Especially if I start really throwing lock in, right? Sure, if this is on the floor, it'll be a little different. But is it though? Right? You can still see if I go lock, how it's picking up the inside edge and rolling on the outside edge. You want this as flat contact patch as possible here because all of this crazy rear weight that we've made here, that's made into this chassis, is gonna throw this, you know, it's gonna move the weight to these three wheels. So the one here in the back, this guy, and this guy. That's what this chassis is meant for, and that's how a real drift car would work. You would go into the corner, initiate, the weight would travel to the outside, right, of the corner, because that's weight, weight does that. But if we're digging this corner in, essentially on a real car, you'll fold that tire in and slow the nose down pretty, pretty badly, right? So yeah, flat. I mean, I, I can only think that you can get away with this kind of stuff on a carpet, maybe. This carpet allows all kinds of crazy nonsense. You know, if, if let's put this guy out of the picture and we'll look at this guy, right? So yeah, that's flat. That's flat at max lock, that's more lock than you would ever need. Forget about this tire, because the weight, this is a weight shift setup on the SX, but there's more weight shift in the MD than in this one. That's why they designed it that way, so you can move the weight all into the back, so when you do throw it in, it'll, you know, see if I move the weight to this corner, even if I, even better, if I pick up this guy, you know how you would see guys three wheel, right? That's pretty flat, right? Look how high this tire is off the floor. You can hardly see it. There it is. That's pretty flat. And I, <laughs> I definitely don't have that much weight being moved around in my car and I don't have front sway bars either. And that's what a front sway bar would do is if you triangulate the weight in this corner, this guy, this shock gets compressed just a little bit because it gets moved into that corner there, a little bit of weight here, which in turn picks up the chasing wheel. And that's why, is because this is getting pushed down, right? And if you push this one down, it's essentially pushing this coil down and that'll lift that corner. In the rear, no sway bar, you know, depending on track, but yeah. Anyway, more about this tomorrow. I wanna go home and eat some food and yeah. All right, guys, talk to you soon. Peace.